Audio is a really important thing when it comes to filming. A wireless microphone system is a really handy thing to have. The problem is, these things are kind of bit of expensive. But what I'm holding with me right here is the Fifine K037. It's one of the cheapest and most affordable wireless mic systems in the market with a price of around $25. It's a really good choice for beginners in filming or for some people who are starting out their vlogs or videos here on YouTube. Now here's the thing. This $25 wireless mic system was not designed for DSLR cameras. That's why in this week's weekend project, we're going to do a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of modding for this unit to work with our DSLR camera. It's a really cheap and decent alternative for those people who are just starting out in filming. That's why if you're on a really tight budget and you want to improve the audio from your videos, this project can be really handy. Now for the review. The Fifine K037 comes in a white box. As you open the box, you'll find a cardboard ad as well as an instruction manual. It's well documented and it has everything that you need to know in getting this thing to work. It comes with a really nice microphone transmitter. The microphone transmitter is powered by two AA batteries, which is really handy since these things are pretty common. The package also includes a mini XLR connection, lapel, or lav mic, and also includes a windscreen. And finally, the receiver. The receiver is powered by two AAA batteries, which is a big plus because these things are pretty easy to find. Pulling it up would significantly increase the receiving range, but if you find it too bulky, you could always push it all the way down and it would still work really well across a room. The only thing that's off with the product was that the manufacturer decided to use a quarter inch audio jack. Its original purpose was to be connected to an audio mixer, which would be then connected to an audio system for broadcasting your voice across a room. The operation of the device is pretty simple. All you have to do is to turn on the receiver by flicking the switch until the LED turns green. A long press would then turn on your transmitter. Once paired, your receiver's LED should turn red. Pressing the button above the transmitter would cycle through the 20 different frequency channels where you could broadcast on. That means you could independently use 20 of these in a set. The receiver is pretty simple to use as well. It does come with an extendable antenna, so if you plan to use this above 50 feet, you might want to pull that up. But if you're using it on close quarters, you can push the antenna all the way down and it still work really well. As for the lapel mic it comes with, it uses a mini XLR connector, which is really nice because these are fixed connectors. That means even if you put this thing inside your pocket, even if it moves around, this thing won't create those unwanted crackling or scratching noises. At the back of the transmitter, there's a handy clip. If putting it inside a pocket is a bit too conspicuous, you can always clip it at the pants or shorts that you are wearing. As for using the lapel mic, all you have to do is to put it underneath your shirt or jacket. Clip it to a point where it's pointing and it's closest to your mouth. Adding the windshield also helps when you're trying to shoot outdoors. Wearing a jacket also helps in concealing your setup. That's pretty much the reason why I wear a jacket in my tutorials even though I live in a tropical country. Let's now modify the unit for this to work with a DSLR camera. You can use a screwdriver to disassemble the receiver module. Our goal in this mod is to remove that bulky quarter inch audio jack. You can use a soldering iron to remove the audio jack from the PCB. Take note that the pins are soldered on both sides of the circuit board. When you're done, you can strip two wires and solder them on the PCB where the audio jack was originally connected to. I used my drill to make a hole for the 3.5mm audio plug that I recycled from the old circuits that were lying around in my workspace. The reason why I chose this is because most modern day DSLR cameras use a 3.5mm audio jack for its microphone input. Solder the ground wire to the ground pin of the 3.5mm audio jack. As for the positive wire of the audio receiver's output, I soldered and binded it to the left and right channels of the 3.5mm 
millimeter plug. I then apply the generous amount of hot glue to keep it from moving around. Now we're done. All you have to do is to put back the unit together. Now that we're all set, we can now use it for recording videos. Start by pairing both devices together. Then find a male-to-male -male auxiliary cord and connect it from your receiver to your camera's microphone input. Take note that you do have to change some of your camera settings, which is your microphone audio level input. I'm using an Nikon D750. Instead of navigating through my settings menu, pressing the I button would open up some quick shortcuts. It is really important to turn off the auto audio leveling. Doing this would prevent noises from being amplified whenever there's a low input from the microphone. Take note some clipping may occur if you don't set this properly. Feel free to experiment with the different audio levels. After some quick observations and some trial and error, I did learn that an audio level of 15, which is basically not a unit, works really well for me inside my workspace or in some areas where there is very little background noise or ambient noise. Today is a really sunny and windy day. It's going to be a perfect time to test the wireless mic system. We're going to do a little bit of range testing in our backyard. Now my camera is set right over here. The transmitter is hooked to the DSLR camera, so I'm going to use my DSLR's built-in microphone jack as our audio recording device. Now the transmitter has its antenna pulled all the way up in order to increase the range, and yeah. Now before I conducted this experiment, I did measure in how far the other point of the lot is so that you guys would have an idea on how far I am from the camera. I'm about 10 feet away from the camera. This is the ideal range when you're trying to conduct an interview for a documentary or something. At about 20 feet, this is a distance similar when I am recording inside my workspace for my YouTube videos and stuff. At around 30 feet, I'd say this is the average range when you're trying to cover an event, let's say a tiny gig or a wedding or let's say a church event or something. Now at this point, I'll just start on talking so that you guys would be able to judge the audio coming out of this thing. Now the reason why I bought a wireless mic system was because I grew tired of editing my videos lately. What I used to do was that I used to record my audio and my videos separately, and I do that by handing do that by putting a Zoom H1 audio recorder in my pocket and it connected to my lapel mic so that my now for the review of the Fifine wireless mic. Let's start with the pros. For years, I've always wanted to have my own wireless mic setup, but what stopped me from buying one was its average price tag. These things cost around $300 to $500, and it may not be for the average filmmaker or content creator here at YouTube. What I love most about this is that it only costs around $25, and it's really affordable. I do love the fact that this thing is powered by two AA batteries, while the transmitter is powered with two AAA batteries. If you're covering an event and you run out of batteries, finding a battery replacement for this is pretty easy. You can just run down to your local convenience store or hardware store and buy some replacement batteries. As audio quality is concerned, this thing does its job pretty well. I took a decent amount of clips using my DSLR in this and reviewed it on my computer. The audio of the clips came out pretty good but I did notice that it did lack a little bit of bass. The mids and treble are there, but yeah, it lacks some bass. Now that lack of bass can be fixed using your audio editing software. I do use Audacity, and you can use the equalizer plugin to increase or add that bass boost. Another plus for me in this is its audio input. The transmitter does use a mini XLR connection. Now the advantage of having a mini XLR is that when you put this thing inside your pocket, the connection wouldn't rotate unlike the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, meaning this thing wouldn't create hissing or popping or let's say some scratching noises when the connection moves because the XLR input does have a lock preventing the plug from moving around. 
As for functionality and ergonomics, I do love the fact that this thing is very simple and easy to use. It only has two buttons, one to set the frequency and one for the on and off. As for the LCD screen, it's backlit so you can use it on dark situations. It does display the frequency of transmission and it does have a three bar battery level indicator. Very handy. For the cons, I do wish they added more buttons for this two buttons for adjusting the audio levels and an extra button for setting the frequency. Right now they have one button for setting the frequency. You have to cycle through all the frequencies in order to go back to the lowest possible frequencies. Not much of a deal breaker but could have been better. As for the microphone, it did come with a crappy mic. I did find out after doing some experiment with this lapel mic. The thin bass wasn't because of the transmitter and the receiver, it was because of the crappy lapel mic. And I wish they made this a lot smaller. You could modify the capsule by just pulling out the cap and yeah, it reveals the capsule. You can always replace that if you do know where to buy a microphone capsule with a really good quality. As for the range, I wouldn't say it's in the cons or in the pros, it lies in between. This thing was advertised to be able to transmit at a range of around 100 feet. Yes, it does transmit that far, but there are times that the transmission of audio does get cut off. I would only recommend this using not more than 50 feet. So to sum it up, would I recommend this? For the average filmmaker or content creator who's on a really tight budget, I'd say yes. It's a real bang for your buck. It does the job pretty well. It's really decent, really functional. But if you're a freelance filmmaker or an audio engineer who is heavily invested on audio and video equipment, you might want to choose something better than this. But it's going to be expensive. So yeah, if you're on a budget, I'd say yes. But if you have a bigger budget, I'd say go for the higher end wireless mic system. So that basically sums up everything. Thanks for watching. Coming up next, we're going to make a phone case that would make your phone's camera more cinematic. A few months ago, we went to Europe, and I brought my project and my smartphone with me. I took a lot of pictures and clips with it. I was able to take shots I never knew I could even do before.